Today we have a story of an entitled parent making a grocery competition. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, father-in-law upset that we don't always take him up on his advice and suggestions. I don't know if this quite qualifies as an entitled parent, but it's starting to get under my skin. Overall, I have great in-laws, they're very involved with our kids and they've been supportive of our relationship since we were high school sweethearts. They're good people. However, I've noticed a trend with my father-in-law over the 9 years that I've been with my husband. He always has suggestions and advice to give when it comes to big life decisions and if we don't go along with what he suggests, or go to him for help, he gets annoyed and benches about it to my husband or mother-in-law or brother-in-law. For example, when I got pregnant with baby number one, he wanted us to tell him the name. I didn't want to, and he kept joking that he'd get it out of us or convince my husband to tell him. When we finally revealed the name we were thinking of, we had to go with that name because he liked it, and the other names weren't his favorite. When we got engaged, he suggested that we contact his friend who's an amateur photographer to do our engagement and wedding photos. When we went with a professional, he didn't like the pictures very much because of the shadows, or the looks on our faces, or the facts that we weren't looking at the camera very often. When we were looking for a vacation house, he suggested that we do what his friends did and call a real estate agency directly to get a good price for a rental. When I tried that, it ended up being far cheaper to just go through a vacation rental website, and he seemed annoyed at that. Now that we're trying to buy a house, we're trying to keep the process to ourselves. For years, he's told us that when we're ready, let him know and he'd connect us with his friend who does mortgage loans or something. Well, last week I was casually hunting around and researching, and I ended up getting us pre-approved for a mortgage one evening out of curiosity. We toured a house we love, and father-in-law caught wind of it, and he went on a rant to brother-in-law about how we should have gone to him and mother-in-law because they have experience with home buying, and they could have probably got us better deals. It wouldn't have mattered. The loan officer was very honest about our options, and it matched up with the research I did. We want to share our lives with him, and we know that he has a lot of good life experience and just wants to help us. But I'm a little tired of him getting upset every time we try and make big life decisions on our own. I agree a lot with what OP's saying here. It's great that he wants to be so involved. It's great that he wants to help so much. But they can't keep turning around stomping their feet being all upset when OP wants to make the decisions on their own or try to figure it out their own way. If OP's comfortable, it might be good to even try to have a sit down and explain that you really appreciate how interested and invested they are and that they have input on just about everything. But also sometimes you want to be able to just make the decisions and sometimes mistakes yourself. And certainly that his reactions make it much less enticing to want to turn to him. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy these stories of crazy entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, My entitled mother left our wedding because it wasn't sufficiently about her. When I, 31-year-old female, had my wedding 5 years ago, we decided to host it at my wife's, 31-year-old female, mother's house. We dressed up the garden and it looked magical. We were able to have a stunning garden wedding with about 100 guests, relatively cheaply. On the big day, while getting set up, my entitled mother was buzzing around making a complete nuisance of herself, trying to change how tables were arranged and allocated, and bothering both my wife and I while we were getting ready for the ceremony. Our friend, who was the unofficial manager of the wedding, was doing his best to keep her satiated while also keeping her from bothering the brides. When it came time to speeches, I made mention of people who specifically helped and people who were part of the wedding party. My sister was mentioned as she was part of the wedding party and my mother-in-law was mentioned for partially funding the wedding and hosting it at her house, investing a lot of time and effort. In the end, my entitled mother did not get mentioned because she didn't help, but rather hindered and has honestly never done anything to support us. When it became clear that she was not getting mentioned, her family started shouting at me from across the garden, reminding me to mention my mother. Out of surprise and shock, I made a quick mention, but I honestly had no idea what to even say. It made no sense to me to mention her. Shortly after, she left in tears and she took her entire extended family with her, about a quarter of the guests. Most of them didn't even say goodbye. It was a devastating amount of drama for what should be a magical day. My dad handled it well and comforted us both. They're divorced. I don't regret not mentioning her even a little bit. All it did was highlight that she can't be trusted to participate in our lives in any important or meaningful way. 
The relationship has never been the same since, especially since she outright refused to apologize to my wife, even trying to compare her behavior with my wife being withdrawn at her family gatherings, since for some reason the entire extended family tends to pretend she doesn't exist. Totally bizarre. I'm glad my wife still loves me so much despite my insane mother. Considering the entitled narcissistic behaviors being expressed here, I think a lot of people would say her cutting OP and their wife off, them making that distance, it's honestly much more of a godsend than if they were trying to insert themselves still. Our next story is, what should I, 22 year old female, do of the relationship with my mother, 56 year old female? For context, I'm a 22 year old French girl born to two parents living in a village and I have a 25 year old brother. I always thought we were a poor family, but we were actually middle class. I always accepted not doing a lot of activities, or any extracurricular activities, and I accepted to pay attention to money. I saw a lot of my friends having pocket money, new clothes, beautiful gifts. I had a helmet for my 10th birthday, and being allowed to go to sleepovers. I was forced to wear clothes my mom liked and that I hated. I learned to keep my mouth shut as no differences were visible when I said I didn't like them, even for my glasses that I hide in school. My parents separated when I was at the end of uni, but for years before, they fought. So much that I hated being in the house. I was put between my parents. The classic, your mother did this, your father did that. I quickly ran away. Boarding school, then uni in another city with my own apartment. A year abroad, and now I'm leaving in another part of the country. I didn't and I still don't give much news, not too good at that and I don't have much to tell them. My apartment was at my own expenses. I had my own money that I worked for, some grants and scholarships to pay for everything. During this period, I didn't come home much, often to visit friends in the area and use my mother's car. She tried to get closer to me but all she did was complain, comment on her situation and so on. At that time I was struggling financially and I didn't say anything, as I was afraid that they would start controlling my spending, which wasn't exorbitant. In the end, I confessed that I was going to food banks and my mother said, I'm glad you're taking advantage of the system, not the support I'd hoped for. When a friend of mine found out, her mother immediately made me a box of food. The summer I turned 20, my mother told me she'd filed for divorce, and my reaction was, finally. For years I'd been telling her to get a divorce whenever she told me about her marital problems. I didn't want to be a therapist, but I felt I was the shoulder she was going to complain on whenever she could. After that, they finally agreed to send me money every month until I finished my studies. I was in my last year of bachelor degree, my mother 25 euros and my father 75 euros. My friends always told me it wasn't much, but I accepted it. I could see my mother affording new furniture at 600 euros a piece and a vacation at 1600 euros for two weeks, but I didn't tell her at the time what I thought of their upbringing and my financial situation. Here I am today, back from abroad in August. When I came back, my mother blamed me for everything that I wasn't grateful for what they'd done for me, that I didn't give them any news, that I don't understand the value of money, that I never supported her when her situation was tough. She blames me for not being close to my brother. I made her understand that I would never be close to him because we were too different, and that someone who tells me I'm the cause of my parents' divorce without ever apologizing doesn't deserve me to go to him as if nothing had happened. She told me I was going too far that if I didn't make an effort, he never would, and that the sibling relationship would be ruined. Now living in another town in France, a long way from our region, I continue to give little news and live my quiet life. I'm seeing a therapist and trying to find my way. Then, a few days ago, I receive a message from my mother telling me that now I've stopped studying. She's no longer obliged to pay me money, so she's going to stop that I can manage on my own, that she has confidence in me and kisses. I was shocked. 25 euros a month isn't much, so I don't really care. But the symbol behind it is big. I'm 22, trying to find my way, and my mother doesn't want to support me anymore. I explained to her what I understood and she told me that she longed for more peace, that I couldn't understand her situation that she didn't want to worry about others anymore because she'd done it too much in her life, that she was willing to help me by talking with me but no longer financially because she had imperatives. I told her that I could rely more on my friends and my boyfriend than on my own family, 
that they'd never been there to help me move out, look for an apartment, etc., that I'd never been able to count on them, so I wasn't surprised by her decision. She made me feel guilty, as usual, telling me that I was hurting her, that I was making her look like a bad mother, that I wasn't grateful for the sacrifice she'd made for me. Her words, that I never helped her, that she recognizes her mistakes, only with the three words in quotation marks that I've just written, and that she'd had to manage on her own not having had a quarter of what I had when I was younger. So I had to do the same and other mean stuff. I don't know what to make of our relationship. We hardly talk to each other. Every time we fight and I'm tired of her blaming me for things all the time. And when I try to make her understand where my reactions come from, she digs her heels in and melodramatizes. She tells me I'll understand why she did it later. Am I wrong? This is true that I used her house and her car to go see friends. That I didn't help. Am I supposed to since I'm her child in her 20s? That I blamed her and didn't give news? Is she wrong? What should I do with this draining and unproductive relationship? I mean, to me, all you need to hear to really know how things are is the fact that she told OP, Growing up, I didn't have X or Y and had to struggle in certain ways, so you have to do so too. I've never understood that when any parent said that to their kid. To me, it's illogical, it's entitled, it's probably narcissistic. I mean, I would think you should be overjoyed if any of your kids don't have to struggle in any of the ways that you did as a kid. Her saying, listen, I didn't have any of that support when I was your age, so I'm not gonna help you. Real sound logic there. I think it's for the best for both sides to just maintain what small relationship you do have and really just not have expectations of anything greater. Our next story is, mom lets her kid throw Lego blocks in a restaurant. My boyfriend and I went out for lunch yesterday, and during our time there, a table behind us came in with an infant and a 4 or 5 year old. The 4 or 5 year old started throwing Lego blocks on the ground 5 or 10 feet away from her. This was definitely not quiet and quite distracting. At some point, a person picked up the block two tables down and was confused and even looked irritated. What did the mother do? She ignored her child for most of it and eventually grabbed her daughter's attention. Oh, but not for long. Shortly after, Lego blocks were being thrown again. It was so frustrating because there were multiple blocks just scattered on the floor where waiters and waitresses walk, and other people. It's such a slip hazard for these individuals, all because a mother could not just take away the blocks, instead just enjoying her conversations with the five other ladies. I was gonna say something about how the kid is totally going to lose those blocks and like, Whatever they go to is never going to be complete again, but like if it's gotten to the point where they've brought the blocks with them to a restaurant, it was never going to be complete to begin with. That said, a 4 or 5 year old definitely is old enough to know to not throw Lego blocks in a restaurant. So yeah, this parent pretty clearly is failing on all fronts. Our next story is, my entitled mother has put herself in competition with my groceries. I'm 16 years old and have recently started buying my own groceries, cooking for myself, etc. I would have started sooner but my truck is currently broke down and my entitled mother has promised to teach me to cook for years and never did. I finally just taught myself because I'm going to college out of state this fall. I get groceries by going with my mentor slash counselor who takes me to the grocery store. It's part of the counseling program I'm in because I only have a permit and again my truck is broke down so I can only buy stuff every so often. My job is also babysitting so I don't even make that much. The babysitting is with my entitled mother because she won't let me get a different job, but holds the babysitting over my head. I have my wisdom teeth removal surgery tomorrow. If you've never had your wisdom teeth removed, you're not allowed to eat anything starting the midnight the day of the surgery. Can't use a straw. You can only eat cold, soft foods until the bleeding stops, followed by only being able to eat soft, warm food when the bleeding is done. I went out with my mentor after school and went to the grocery. I have a credit card in my entitled mother's name and my dad's name, but they've both been given to me and I pay them. My entitled mother called me as I walked into the store and specifically said not to use my dad's card unless I go over 40 on her card. So I used her card for everything but a container of ice cream because I didn't want to chance it and have my card decline. I bought a small container of ice cream, those drinkable yogurts, oatmeal, and quick make mashed potatoes and mac and cheese. I struggle with texture issues, so the only cold things I could really eat were the ice cream and yogurt. 
I get home, my entitled mother wants to know what I bought. I showed her being proud and whatnot before she sees my ice cream and says she's gonna try some. I figured, you know, tomorrow, after I opened it. Nope. Immediately opened it and took a big spoonful. I took a bite as well, just to make sure I liked it, but immediately put it back. Made a joke about eating it and want to take a nap. I wake up to go grab food and she takes my ice cream out of the freezer and grabs a spoon, saying she's going to try it. I point out she already did, and she just tells me she didn't with a smirk on her face. I go to grab it because I bought it. For tomorrow, after surgery. She pulls away from me and starts eating several spoonfuls just smirking at me. My dad has the decency to call her out saying she only said she was going to take a bite. She mentions how she's going to just buy me another one. She won't, or she'll do it days after I need it. I told her I bought it with my money. She says I used her card. When I pointed out that she literally told me to, she says it was still her card. The one she had gave me and if it was in her care, she would have maxed it out already. She tells me it's messed up. I only bought myself ice cream and not her. Didn't think about my mom at all. I remind her I already told her I was getting ice cream. I also reminded her I was having surgery and there was little to nothing else I could eat. She starts fighting with me for some reason. She then says she's going to eat everything after I go to sleep and I can just deal with it. I reminded her how childish she was being at 41, fighting with a 16 year old about food I bought. My dad yells at us to stop and she keeps going about how if I take it upstairs, see how good it is tomorrow. I once again asked her if she was really going to, at 41, eat all of a 16 year old's food that was bought because of a surgery. My dad yells at me this time to drop it, go back to sleep and stop being grumpy and that I have an attitude. This isn't even the first time she's like tried to compete with my groceries. For some reason, I bought my own body wash like four days ago because we haven't had any for a few months. And the next day she comes in flaunting how she got her and my little sister body wash and making a big deal out of it. I bought stuff to make dinner and she's trying to take charge of my cooking. I told her not to put the butter in yet. I have to get some stuff prepared first and I'm going to use a pan anyways because it's hard to mix stuff in such a small pot. She puts the butter in anyways causing me to rush. The butter burns. When I try to mix anything I have to tilt the pot sideways. I had to dump it because it was burnt and she blamed me for burning it. When I told her I was the one cooking and to leave me alone and I was able to do my own thing, it didn't burn. Edit, I got out of surgery a few hours ago and everything is fine, just sore. Thank you everyone for your support. Trust me, I'm getting out as fast as I can, although I do want to stand up for my dad a bit. He was wrong in this situation, but he's normally on my side for everything. I don't know why he acted like this during this situation, but he usually has my back when I'm against my entitled mother. On the way to the surgery, my entitled mother tried saying how it wasn't a big deal and how she never rubs anything she buys in my face, which isn't remotely what I'd done, so very clear she doesn't even feel bad about it, but at least I'm out. I ate some mashed potatoes and I'm so excited for my days of slop ahead of me. Thank you all again for your kind words and advice. Hey, at least in this situation, at least most of the time, OP has one of their parents that is willing to have their back. For most people that end up on this subreddit, that's more than they can ask for. Most of the people on the subreddit, they either have just one bad parent altogether, one bad parent and another that just doesn't care, or God forbid, two bad parents. I mean really, you can just keep tallying up the number when you include all the other family members too. Our next story is, my mom just asked me to borrow money. I don't know if this is the right place to post this, but I'm really frustrated. My mom has been physically disabled and drawing a disability check since she was 27, the same year I was born. She met my stepdad in her 30s. The guy has always been off his rocker, cocaine and crack addict, gets a prescription for methadone, allegedly because he had a severe injury like 30 years ago and is also disabled. I've worked hard since I was old enough to. I'm 28 an industrial electrician, I bought my home at 24, I got married 4 months ago, and my wife is 10 weeks pregnant. My mom has recently been talking about how she's redoing her kitchen counters and butcher block, my stepdad's house, she has no claim or ownership to it, and how nice it was. More recently than that, she's talked about how my stepdad has been getting worse and worse, and getting back on the hard drugs. 
Probably two hours ago, she messaged me asking to borrow $400 so she can get away from stepdad for a few days. I understand that she's in a messed up place right now, but it rubs me the wrong way really hard that she just redid her, his, kitchen in butcher block on a disability pension and then messaged me when I happened to be working a 16 hour shift with it 16 degrees outside so I can save for when my wife gives birth. I'm sorry for crap formatting or potentially posting to the wrong sub, I'm at working on mobile. I'm just frustrated and disheartened because both of my parents and my sister are like this. Edit, I was mostly just blowing off steam with this post because I was on my third 16 hour shift straight trying to rack up that sweet overtime and just exasperated with everything around me except for my wife, but I really do appreciate the support. I was going to leave this post alone since it was just a post venting, but since I've got so much feedback and support, I'll drop an update. I didn't send my mom any money, but instead I booked her a weekend at a decent but inexpensive hotel in an out-of-season tourist location in our state. I told her that this is a one-time deal. I'm pretty confident that mom isn't on any kind of drug because she's scared to even take the Xanax she was prescribed by her doctor. Seriously, she has probably 15 half-used bottles in a shoebox hidden away because she refuses to take the prescribed dose and only takes them as needed. I also told my mother that if she wanted out of the situation, my wife and me were looking to buy another home, and I would help her with the cost of getting a good, used, pole-behind camper we can set up there, but I can't just be frivolously giving her out money because if my dad or sister were to hear about it, they'd show up with their hands out. I appreciate all the support, you guys. I think OP did ultimately the right thing here. I'm glad for their sake they're not necessarily worried about her using that $400 for any kind of harmful recreational thing. And especially considering she went and spent so much money fixing up this guy's house, you don't want to give her $400 in the fear that she's actually going to turn around and give any of that to him. I'm not comparing her to a homeless person, but it's similar to how you would want to give food to a homeless person instead of money to them. Our next story is, my parents told me I owe them for all they've done for me after secretly stealing my identity. Note, this was written a few years ago on my personal hidden blog, The Awakening. This year, I've become knowledgeable on why credit is so important. Blindly, I downloaded my credit report, expecting close to nothing to be on it. I knew that I had a school loan and two of my own credit cards. What I found out next quite possibly may have shattered my heart. I was shocked to see that I had a total of six credit cards open. What? How could this be? Where do these extra four cards come from? Why are they open still with outstanding balances? Why have two been closed by the creditor? Why is my credit so low? After panicking for a few minutes, my mind began to wander to a place I've hoped it never would, my mother. The betrayal begins. Six years ago, my mother first stole my identity by opening her first credit card in my name using my social. Since then, she's opened three more credit cards and has practically utilized them to their maximum limits. She has missed payments and had accounts closed from years ago that still have balances. How could my mother do this to me? I felt sick. I felt hurt. I felt confused, angry, overwhelmed. I felt disgust. All I ever did was try to help you. I immediately called my mom on the phone and I was not holding back. She hung up on me immediately. I then proceeded to call my stepdad to inform him about the situation and vent about how upset I was. The poor brainwashed and manipulated man stood up for my mother stealing my identity and said, she was only trying to build your credit. At this point I'm angry, upset, hurt, confused, frustrated, and feeling more emotions than believed humanly possible. I know my mother has struggled financially in the past, with her previous home going into foreclosure and having to file for bankruptcy. At one point, my stepdad was working three jobs to support my mother, brother, and I while my mother was jobless. My mother did not work while with my dad, her first husband, either. He busted his butt at his restaurant in order to provide for my family and sadly missed many birthdays and important events in the process. Did she ever feel remorse? What she'd done is illegal. She could go to jail. I could press charges. I could put a burden on her life just like she did on mine. True Colors The perfect life my mother displays on her social media is all a cover. She's not rich, does not have a perfect family, her relationship isn't perfect and she's not pleasant to be around. 
Once confronted, my mother experienced some sort of bipolar slash split personality episode where she went back and forth between attempting to guilt me and cursing me out. Please read below. This is an example of a text thread that was entirely my mother speaking without me interrupting. Notice the repeated mood swings. Uncalled for accusations. We will pay the credit cards off as soon as possible. I never intended to put you out but create credit for you. You are out of control. You can expect your credit to go up by 30 points when paid off. I never took a penny from you. All I ever did was try and help you. I am done. I am over trying to help you. I did everything I could for you. I would never let you fall. What the freak? Is this my daughter thinking me? Oh, I'm so disappointed to you and your reaction. My intentions are to pay it off and let you be on your own. You are out of control. It was not until a week later that I spoke to my mother again, reminding her of the debt she has to pay and that no payments have yet to be made. Our conversation ended with her saying, Bye, Ben paid. Bye, freak off, Bench. I reply, Own up to what you've done. She says, I'm freaking sorry for giving you credit. The following day, she informed me that she had paid off and closed all of the cards. I asked her for proof of email, screenshot, etc. I have yet to hear back from her. So, what now? It's been exactly three weeks now since the incident has occurred. So first, I stayed up many nights wondering what I did to deserve the betrayal from my parents. I didn't understand why she was able to hurt me this bad and refused to apologize. I didn't understand how my stepdad, who's been in my life for almost 20 years, was so quick to back my mother up and cut me out. I've since opened my eyes and realized that I do not have to allow toxic people to remain in my life. I've leaned on my colleagues, boyfriend, and other family members during the difficult time. I know that in order to move on with my life, I need to forgive, not for them, but for myself. I began to understand that they would have to live with what they have done for the rest of their lives, while I am able to have peace in my heart. Fools take a knife and stab people in the back. The wise take a knife, cut the cord, and free themselves from the fools. Recap. What accounts? So just a bit of recap. My mother illegally opened four credit cards in my name when I turned 18 without my knowledge. Now at 24 I found out and demanded that they be paid off and closed. My mother convinced herself that she is only helping me build my credit, not harming me in any way. She told me that I owe her for all she's done for me as a parent. You were not deprived. She has made up the scenario in her mind that without her doing this for me, aka running four cards over their limit and missing payments, that I would have zero credit. Anyway, since her closing three of the four cards, my credit has gone up nearly 80 points. Our relationship now? Our relationship? I still feel it's ruined. I still hate her and am disgusted by her actions and what she's done to me. We still have yet to speak. She refuses to apologize because she believes that I owe her for parenting me. I also have not spoken to my stepdad who was quick to jump to her defense and attack me verbally. I do not think this will ever change. If it does, it will make some serious counseling and gaining back of trust. Moving forward, life goes on. I've continued my career and remodeled my classroom. I've worked on bettering myself. I've also began to come to the conclusion that in order to move forward, I'm going to have to forgive. For her? Heck no. She's not worthy of even knowing my feelings on this topic. I need to work on forgiving for myself so I can be at peace and continue my life knowing that I cut her off because she is toxic. She's not a good person and I simply do not want to associate myself with her. Family or not, there comes a time when it is essential to remain at peace with yourself, even if that means cutting off your mother. Now, we're civil but things will never be the same. She still said on the fact that she did absolutely nothing wrong. There's definitely no winning here if they can't look you in the face and admit that they were at least mildly wrong. If they truly were doing it as a helpful thing, wanting to help OP build credit, this all would have been on board with OP's knowledge. It's a great thing to help your kid build credit and get that jump start. Definitely not when you try to do it behind their back and build up debt in their name for the last six years. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.